I'm Stuart Ralston, I'm chairman of the Pageants Association, and it's my pleasure to invite you to look at this video, which is a, one in a series of videos we're doing to mark Pageants Awareness Day 2023. Now, um, 2023 is a special year because it marks the 50th anniversary of the association. And so our theme for this Awareness Day is looking at the patient perspective, looking at the support that we have given to pageants and also our patients with pageants and also looking at how we've supported research into pageants and this video is about research and it's my great pleasure to welcome Dr Claire Clarkin from the University of Southampton who, who has been researching in bone disease and also in pageant disease. Welcome Claire. Hi Stuart. Okay Claire really good to talk to you today and thanks for agreeing to you know to have the interview. Maybe you could just tell us a bit about yourself. I know you're a bone biologist, but how, how come you got interested in researching into Paget's disease? Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm a bone biologist, Stuart, but I'm particularly interested in the blood supply into bone. And so typically when people think about bone, they think, or inside of the bone, they think it's quite solid, but actually it's really porous. And inside each of these pores are lots of blood vessels. And these blood vessels are essentially really important in the maintenance of bone health throughout our life. So as we grow and develop as children into adolescents, the blood vessels are closely coordinated with the bone growth that we see there. Into adulthood, if we fracture or break a bone, the blood supply will come in, it'll provide oxygen and nutrients and, and help the bone heal. And then as we age, we know that we can see a sort of um, an abnormality, an aging of the blood vessels themselves where they become abnormal and dysfunctional. And that's kind of linked with um, bone degeneration. Okay. So this is where Paget's came in. So Paget's is really, really interesting because there seems to be a really, um, strong vascular component to the disease. So basically there's loads and loads of blood vessels associated with pagetic lesions. And so quite often patients will describe the skin above lesions as being quite warm and that's an increase in blood supply. And also orthopedic surgeons who operate, who are operating on pagetic patients describe um, the lesions as being highly, highly vascularized. They've got to pump the blood out of the lesions as they, as they operate. So those blood vessels are basically bringing pain, they're bringing inflammation to uh, the pagetic lesions. And I'm really interested in understanding why they're there, how they get there, um, and if we can stop them to try and uh, better treat the disease. Okay, that's great. Now, I know, looking through our records, that you've had a couple of uh, grants funded by the Paget. So, so how did what was the first thing you did to try and investigate this? I guess it must be quite tricky looking at blood vessels in bone. Yeah, so one of the hardest things about looking at the vasculature in bone is essentially they're really, really hidden. So they're hidden within the bone mineral, which makes them really, really difficult to study and image using standard sort of imaging techniques that we might use in the clinic, for example. So since I've arrived in Southampton, I've been working with engineers to try and improve the um, x-ray based imaging techniques here to allow us to uh, better visualize the vasculature essentially. We've done that quite successfully over the last 10 years and we've got some funding as you see from the Pagets Association to help that um, be developed. Um, and not only can we visualize the vasculature now but we can also uh, measure it as well which is really useful. So we've developed really um, nice computer programs which allow us to construct the blood vessels in bone in 3D and we can take measurements such as um, blood vessel size, length, diameter, branching and we can look at all these parameters in the context of um, things like aging or bone degeneration as well so we're also interested to look at that in in the context of pageants. Okay that's great so you've, you've kind of developed those techniques and, and then I, as you said you, you I know you have been looking specifically in, in that kind of model of Paget. So tell us, tell us about that and what you found. Um, so we have quite an interesting preclinical experimental model of Paget's disease where um, a gene called sequestrosome 1 has been mutated. Now, some people that have Paget's um, have this mutation as well. So it's a really relevant and useful preclinical model. Um, so we're obviously really interested to look at, at the blood vessels in this model, but we did some really interesting experiments looking at bone strength um, before we did that. And so what we did was we got um, female pagetic bone in the lab 
and we basically tried to break it. So we subjected it to loads of stress and strain until it broke. And we did that over and over and over again. And what we found was that in female pagetic bone, the bone always tended to localize and break in the same place. So it was very easy to predict. And then when we looked at a uh, male pagetic bone, the bone was much weaker. And when we subjected it to the same levels of stress and strain, the fractures were always completely random and they were all over the place and really, really difficult to predict. So following on from those kind of strength measurements, we then wanted to see if the blood vessel, problems of the blood vessels might be underlying these differences that we were seeing between males and female pagetic bone. Uh, and we did see differences. So in the male pagetic bone, their blood vessels are much larger and there's much more of them. So it suggests that indeed, and the differences in the blood supply between males and females might be contributing to these differences in fracture outcomes that we saw in the labs. That's very interesting. So what I guess what you're hinting is that, that, that the fractures were going along the path of blood vessels or something like that. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it's very kind of early days in terms of understanding how exactly it's happening. But basically what seems to be happening is we've got more pores within the pagetic bone, more blood vessels, and that's contributing to the weakness that we see in the bone and their susceptibility to fracture. Wow, that's fantastic. And it's amazing you can do that in the lab. Now, um, as you know, I'm a clinician, but I always think that basic research, the type of research you're doing really, um, can help us learn more about the disease and also maybe be able to apply it perhaps for treatment. Is, is there a prospect of that, do you think, with uh, looking at the blood vessels as a target? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. So there's loads and loads of diseases actually um, where an abnormal blood supply is associated with them. For example, um, tumor growth, cancer, um, rheumatoid arthritis, macular degeneration. So all of those diseases actually have um, drugs that are um, in the clinic at the minute that can actually reduce blood vessel growth as a way to treat those diseases. So I think that's definitely something that'd be worth looking into in Paget's disease. So using these inhibitors to restrict the blood vessel growth to hopefully reduce the inflammation, the pain, and the subsequent bone kind of remodeling that we're seeing um, in the lesions. That's fantastic. That Well, it, it's really good to hear that actually this could impact clinical, I guess, also maybe affect blood loss after surgery. That's still a problem, actually, even with bisphosphonates. Yeah. Well, Claire, thanks very much for sparing the time to speak to us about your research today. Blood vessels and pagetic bone, absolutely fascinating topic. <laughs> and, and the best of luck for your future research. And thanks once again. Great. Thanks very much, Stuart. And just thanks to the Pagets Association as well for all their support and funding. You're welcome. Thank you.